And I certainly cover those, but I will also cover some of the other stuff that we're doing as well. Oh, it does help if I turn this on. Yay! Nice the way the technology works. Right. And I'm going to talk about a few of our uh, current conservation projects around our estuaries. There are others if you probe me. As earlier on, we have five estuaries. We have a, you know, larger and smaller projects across all of our estuaries. A big part of my work, and indeed of the work we do, is uh, community engagement and awareness raising. We very strongly feel that the more the community can engage and understand, that the community can look after the estuaries themselves. There's only one of me, so it's hugely important that everybody understands and can do their bit. One of the things that we're most proud about is, uh, or my, I am anyway, is the production of the drip cartoon animation. It's just five minutes long and it's showing in the, the library at the moment. You know, in five minutes I hope it gets across most of the message that we're trying to get across. One of the things that uh, issues with our estuaries is uh, the, the loss of the edges of our estuaries through development. And one thing we're about to publish is the Construction Environmental Management Plan Guide. And this encourages all developers from inception of a project idea right through to the end build, its use and its maintenance, is encourages them to consider the environmental impact of that whole development from cradle to grave and look at how that can be minimised. And there's hundreds of links within this document. It's one of those documents that will be out of date the very second it's published because these things are changing all the time. But we hope that it gives people that level of guidance and encourages people to think about the environmental impact of the development. You know, just things like rainwater off the building. So many of our houses feed that water into the sewage system, which then overloads it, which then leads to stormwater overflows. If we can redirect that right from the start, we're going to cut out, we're hopefully going to cut down at least on the number of these um, emergency outfalls. A project that we're just uh, instigating on the, within the Dart estuary is looking at the salt marsh. And it's a salt marsh restoration what we're doing at the moment is just recognising those salt marshes that we have. And then the next stage will be to look at their condition. We're going to get them surveyed by an expert. We are hoping that they will then come up with prescriptions that will bring those salt marsh habitats into their, their prime condition, both in terms of their biodiversity and their carbon take up. We will then sort of present, that there's a, a number of, let me go back a second, I'll stay with that slide. We will then present that to the relevant landowners and together with details of funding that they may uh, apply for and hopefully they will restore those salt marshes. There are a number of restorations that we hope we will see across our estuaries. Uh, certainly the seagrass, the salt marsh that we're just instigating for the dart, we hope to take those across all of our estuaries ultimately, but these things take time. And I'd love to see um, a restoration of our native oyster uh, beds in the bottoms of our estuaries as well. You'll have heard a lot about the Pacific oyster, that's more of an intertidal animal, the native oyster is more of a, a seabed animal that would literally filter the water. You know, our salt marsh is a hugely important ecosystem for a number of ecosystem services, and that's why we're wanting to restore them. Most of these things are. And we are engaging with these organisations to roll out this project. As I said, just starting at the moment. Been involved in seagrass conservation for, for many years. A lot of this has been awareness raising. Uh, there's a I'm, what I'm really trying to do at the moment is to raise more awareness and understanding of our dwarf seagrass beds. This is the kind of like the second cousin, if you like, of the, the main seagrass areas. 
everybody knows about seahorses and the, the big seagrass areas, these are the intertidal ones. And we want to understand more about those uh, and look forward to conserving these in the future. Uh, driving some of the research in partnership with the University of Plymouth. A lot of these things, it's more, it's, it's more about controlling the things that are affecting the health of these uh, seagrass beds. Less, in, in Salk and Kingsbridge at least, less about replanting it, more about halting the issues that are affecting the seagrass. So here it's that case of, as I mentioned earlier on, water quality um, affecting the, the, the health of those. <coughs> if you can get the waters clearer, the, the nutrient levels in the water better, we hope we will see an increase in the salt marshes and the seagrass uh, beds, and they may well have a positive feedback and actually improve the water quality again. But we need to work with the wider community around <coughs> the estuary to look at all the different ways that we can reduce these nutrients in the first place. Uh, I mentioned the Pacific Oyster. We have a particular issue within one area of this is the dwarf seagrass beds in uh, the mouth of Colopit Creek, if anybody knows it. We have a growing number, very unusually, of Pacific Oysters out on the mudflats. This oyster is also known as the rock oyster because it normally only grows on rocks. For some reason, the conditions here are benign enough for these oysters to thrive. If we allow them to continue there, they will reef up and they will displace the Pacific, sorry, displace the, the dwarf seagrasses. So we need a plan of action to manage those oysters. In other places, we've been bashing them, killing them on the rocks. But you can't do that on the mud because it over soft sediment. One, it's not help, um, safe for the volunteers, but you just get covered in mud. So we're exploring <laughs> other avenues to that. And as I said earlier, marine conservation is very much about managing the, the issues and then the ecosystem will tend to look after itself. It's not truly rewilding, but it's that kind of thing. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to just swap yeah, yeah. that? Shall I unplug?